Today's video we're going to be looking at National Knife Day at River's Edge Cutlery in Hilliard, Ohio. This is their 21 year celebration and I went and I want to show you all the great people I talked to and all the cool stuff that I saw. So stick around. guys know what to do with the knife they can take a broken piece of glass and gut a fish in five seconds they're the real real uh, guides out there so guys while we're talking feel free to grab some of my refuse uh, uh, cedar and make some fuzz sticks like this beautiful fuzz stick that you guys want to test out your knives just carve you don't have to carve anything important come grab a bag and just do it so that Such you guys are fire. using knives <laughs> it. To do it. you can throw it all in the fire when you're done um, we're talking about bushcraft and machetes. So why are machetes important? Well, they're the most, and I'm gonna be demonstrating stuff while I'm talking. They're probably one of the most used, used blades in the world right now. One of the only chances people still have for fighting, when you, when you hit somebody on the side with a machete like that, it's like a pimp slap. They call that planazo. It's like a 1960s term, but people still machete fight. So they're still using machetes for self-defense. Um, machetes are a poor person tool what does that mean it's for people in in central and south america and all over the world who can't afford a john deere tractor those things are expensive and, or they're on the side of a mountain where they can't use stuff and they're using these tools every day and in the u.s machetes have a bad rep big knives have a bad rap because there used to jason Voorhees and and all these other shows and things where machetes don't uh, uh aren't seen much but they're truly an agricultural tool i know i sound like i'm going on a on a um a rant about machetes, but you guys will enjoy it, I hope. They make so many different shapes for one thing. That's all right, it's insured. They make so many different shapes for different things that are out there. This one is actually a Taurus machete. It's normally, being very careful, bent at the side here to cut on the ground very, very close. And there's like 20 different designs for sugar cane out there and all these other machetes. So, and this one's really cool for hitting the dinner bell too. So you'll notice there's a ting at the end, this glass-like ting, 5160 does that really, really well. Metal harmonics, uh, somebody told me once, I don't know if that's a real term, but that glass is what a lot of people look for when they go for a machete. They'll step on it and then look down the line to make sure it's straight. And then when I go to Lowe's and I'm wondering why all these machetes are bent, it's because some Latino who knew what he was doing was checking them, trying to make ones and, and bent them and was checking the shape. So yeah. they do all that. You're all knife guys, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to take it up a level. We'll start with safety with knives, but instead of, hey guys, just bring a Band-Aid, always carry a tourniquet. Um, if you're a hardcore knife guys, especially you knife makers and, and people who are, are really big enthusiasts, I'd like you to pass this stuff around. They make clotting Band-Aids, so if you cut yourself in front of your mom or something, you start bleeding all over the place, you put that Band-Aid on there and you don't have to sit there and go, yeah, mom, totally cool, you know, <laughs> and, and totally didn't just happen to me. Uh, these are wound closure devices. When you're done, guys, just put them on the table over here. They work really well, especially if you get a face cut or something like that for non-invasive sutures. Um, and I carry them in my knife kit at Blade Show for sure. 
um, with big blades and axes. I always have a tourniquet with me. Um, one of the Matisse Treisman who I know, his son just died last week. Horrible WhatsApp. Uh, so they had a, a single shot shotgun and um, apparently I need to go teach them gun safety because he shot his friend in the, in the femoral artery and bled out and oh, wow. died. Yeah. Um, and they, they tried to tourniquet it and everything. That just shows you. It takes two people to cut themselves. Experts and beginners. So no matter how confident you are in your blade use, um, always want to be careful and carry stuff just in case because I am a walking cut all the time. I've got scars all over my body just for me doing <laughs> stupid stuff. This one's my safety one. See, it's orange. Very safe. Mm -hmm. um, cuts, most common cuts when using an axe or a machete are to the opposite foot, on top of the foot, on top of the leg, and on top of the opposite hand. Consequently, a lot of times the same thing happens with your kitchen knives, with your bushcraft knives. The kitchen knives, they drop go right through my crock or right through my thing in the kitchen. And I'm like, Amazon jungle for years and I just hurt myself here in the kitchen and my wife makes fun of me. So watch the opposite foot. You can change your stance if you're chopping. You can um, mitigate it or, or take it away by going on your knees that way. You know, you're not cutting straight through. You can cut away from you, but always cut at a 45 degree angle. That really, really helps. If you cut straight through, you're fighting all of the um, that tangential sort I can't remember the fibers Wait. Wait. yeah you're, you're you're fighting the fibers and we'll do a demonstration here in a second yes sir mr. Lachi if, if you miss you go back again and try and cut it again <laughs> or you watch out for the person behind you so that's why you want to be on your knee and make sure that you know. right I mean I'm not gonna go through the jungle like this <laughs> you know you want to be careful but you know that just jungle even in the in the garden too sometimes we'll be cutting briars all of a sudden Ooh, okay I got to be careful of that so being aware even if you miss what happens afterwards um dogs who has dogs here you're out there using an axe or or a knife and you have a dog oh he's doing something playful they might come up after you so you want to be careful always around you not just for kids and people but what's going on around you if you have an axe or a knife and you're getting ready to swing look above you too because sometimes that can happen i have a friend with a really sweet looking cut on the on the um, side of his head just from getting caught up in the laundry line when he was splitting wood so always look around you. When you're about to cut a tree down, whether it's an ax or a knife or a machete, look up, make sure there's no hornet's nest in there. Watch out for ants underneath. Otherwise you're swinging this thing around and all sorts of stuff can happen. Lanyards on knives, especially fixed blades. You know, a lanyard is this hanging thing here. When the knife gets really, really long, you want to be careful of the, uh, of the um, lanyard because it starts swinging in very important areas that you don't want to happen. So. Most Central and South Americans that I've worked with hate having a lanyard on their wrist. Now hanging it while you're at camp and all that stuff, that's great too. And a lot of times when I have my axes and my big knives out and I'm working stuff, I always put it edge in by a tree. And that way in the fall when I'm looking around, oh crap, where did I put all my stuff because I'm a squirrel. Um, oh, it's over by a tree. There's probably a better joke in there somewhere. Um, so a lot of times you'll see that. Now the other crazy part is something that I learned this is a very dangerous machete to Central and South Americans because it has the edge all the way through. Now, arguably, this is one of the most dangerous tools in bushcraft because it has such a long edge. So how are all these guys doing this down in Central and South America not cutting themselves? Well, they only sharpen this part. All this part here, they have very, very dull for flipping around, using a lot of small cuts, things along that line. They'll be using it very, very fine to even trim nails, to do all sorts of things too. Like I said, guys, when they're out of bait, shave off the bottom of their foot, put it on the hook and throw it on there and catch more um, stuff. But they're, they're using a big knife for a lot of small knife tasks. And that's really, really fun. It's not something that we uh, have a chance to do too much for opening up our Amazon boxes and, and whatnot with our folding blades. But um, I do recommend trying it because you get a lot more appreciation for the cutting edge and, and how we got to where we are today. We didn't get to where we are today with knives by chewing on bones, right? We, we made tools and these tools kind of formed where we're at today. So we have a lot of different, really, really big knives and big axes out here for use in the term bushcraft. What is bushcraft? Why is it so popular all of a sudden? And what does that mean? Bushcraft is basically the art of using your environment around you to make it more comfortable. It's not survival. Survival's getting out, right? You know, you want to get out of there after my plane crash. <laughs> my plane crash. I don't want to 
start making fuzz sticks and practice bushcraft. So there's like a big difference, but what it does is it uses these and it uses this a lot. Whether what tool you have is really important, but also knowing axe craft, tool craft, biology, like the walnut trees around here, some of the other trees, knowing what's in here rather than buying the coolest trees. That way you get more, I don't want to cut this up, this is my baby. Um, I gotta save that for other stuff. I always cut all my, um, all of my demonstration stuff through. Having a backboard is important. Whether you're carving, chopping, going through, using a knife. I'm gonna use a pointing knife since that's very popular around here. Using a knife to help get control over it too. That way you're able to use your hands more. Using your shoulder is really important too, especially if you're trying to get big, big curls. Some people just do this all day long with the limp wrist and tend to not get anywhere with it. Um, the more you use your shoulder, the more you're able to get huge, big hunks of, of stuff off there that's really, really flammable. Um, that's really important too, to make sure you don't have pin cell as well. So holding this grip with the closed hand is really important for more power. To have less power and finesse, you can use your thumb. For instance here, like that, a lot of people when they first start carving, that's a little bit less strong, but you have a little bit more control. You can use two thumbs. I happen to have two of them right now, um, for now. And you can get a little bit more control that way. There's a couple of different grips too that you can use. They call them, um, they call this a pinch grip. A um, whole bunch of different names, but just like a chef's pinch grip where you grip it that way can be used from a small knife, even if you want to do it at the tip. This is internet, this is really unsafe, but I do this a lot because I, I learn from guys who are um, really good with knives. I'll grab up like this, and this is a really sharp blade, and pinch it this way just to do that. Do I recommend you guys do that? It's up to you. It's your comfort level. Um, and, and also, I have a whole bunch of tournaments over here, so there, there you go. That. Now, that pinch grip is super important, not just in knives, but it can be used in some cases in axe I don't do this much but to, to get really, really, really fine things. What I really find myself using it for, I keep using this one. This is a Condor Repoy. There, I'm being promotional. I designed this. Uh, this is new this year, but I'll be using it like this a lot, even up high, just to do fine, fine carvings and working stuff too. If I have to anchor a big knife, I'll anchor it in my, um, in my, sh in my shoulder like that, or I'll flip it over and do this style too. This, this works really, really well. My friends are really, really much better at this than I am because they're doing baskets all day long that they'll take the outer cover of baskets and they're able to take off the bark that way. But that's important, not just out in the bush. Try it at home with your chef knife too because you'll be Julian, um, julienning onions with it as well. It's a very, very important grip. For machete use too, this grip can also be applied this way. Everybody hold up your fingers like this and give me the okay look. A lot of Americans will hold it with this death grip and let me find something to chop here. There's so much stuff here, this is great. And they'll hold it in this death grip and then they'll chop. We'll get to the chopping part. Get to the chopping. And they'll wonder what's going on and why their hand hurts. When you use that okay grip, you get this flick at the very end and it chops way, way better. But using it in light material over here, if you hold that grip, you're not gonna get too far, but this flicking grip, you can just walk through. Hitting it at an angle and do all of that. So that grip is really important. This is probably one of the most important things I learned for big knife and machete use. Um, weirdly enough, with kukris, it also translates to kukris as well. My most used items, this is a um, easy lap, combo stone. I really like diamond stones because I'm moving metal really, really quick. They have a marker in there. You put the marker, you put a mark on the bevel of the knife and you're able to see how far you get. The ceramic is really cool. I love ceramic. Believe it or not, most ceramic is made by Coors, the beer company, um, which is, they have a really big ceramic style. For beginners and people who just want to get stuff going, this work sharp guy is the way to go. I really love this. I have three of them. And even though I have all like, hundreds of dollars worth of sharper equipment, this is probably my most used one. What I recommend, if you guys love all your EDC knives, I put this right by my computer. 
And then whenever I have a knife in my pocket, I sharpen it, and it gets me to learn more about how I'm sharpening. I'm not worried about screwing up my knife. I can go unscrew it up over here at River's Edge or whatever, but I learn more just by having it by my computer. And then when I have it in my backpack during hunting season or whatever, I'm really familiar with it. Normal splitting where there's one side and it's gonna be breaking along that surface. Everybody always just wants to go straight in the middle. If you have a smaller blade, you don't have to do that. You can go whoop, right on the sides here. I need a small one. It's a little tiny that I want to bash. Oh, I got a whole line over here. You can start just by getting wood. I'm looking to see where the grain is. You can start just by hitting the tip and breaking it off that way too. That works very, very well. Now, one of the other things too when you're batoning is this is a really common area for people to get cut. They tend to do that, and even on my jungle trips and stuff, people go, okay, and they pick up something, and they end up getting cut that way. Or they're right up here, and they keep it like that, and they end up getting cut. So be careful when you're batoning. But you can section out stuff. I'm gonna use an ax just because it's gonna work better for this demo. Um, to section out stuff by aiming at the green before I start cutting. We're looking at the round parts of this, right? So I would aim up here and knock it out on each side. And to a lot of people, especially people who keep their houses with the uh, axe or keep their houses with wood, this is like well known. But for me, it took me a little bit to learn that. You go, oh, okay, I can do that with the knife. If it's such a good thing, you everything along that line. So you can sit here. I'm gonna go on the ground because with the long axe, it's much safer. With the shorter axe, oh, I need all that blood for living and stuff. So I try and keep it inside. So I'll go on my knees. That way it goes into the ground. Of course, that has to be the one, the first one that I went for. So you get the idea of chunking something that way. You can get giant logs with just a little little hatchet and work it that way. Now you got all these little points. So I'm gonna aim maybe right there. Pop it out, that was tiny. That, that point sucked. There's a piece. There's a piece. And you'll break them off of this tangential surface. So you'll see people go, oh man, I need to test this knife. Oh, gotta get Got to get all my uh, uh, cool Instagram shots and all that. I'm making fun of myself, by the way. And, I'm fucking all this. <laughs> and they start right in the middle and just start beating the crud out of the knife. Poor little knife isn't designed to split wood. You can just start on the sides here and get chunks to fall out. Here goes two. Pop, pop, pop. Here you go. And then, oh, I need to start making start making the one stick fire. I guess that's what splitting this way and then you have small chunks and you guys get it. You get smaller and smaller and smaller wood too. So you can find out more about my stuff on Instagram, yep. Facebook, yep. all of the interwebs things right. like that too. So um, probably have a link below or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'll put a link down below for all your stuff. If you, you just look up out. Joe Flowers Knife on, on Google, you can find a whole bunch yeah. of and, stuff. And the thing is, you, you've been doing this for a long time. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because you were like talking about the pterosaur design, mm -hmm. that's been around for Yeah, years? since I believe 2009, 2008. Yeah. That was one of the first designs I ever did. Right. Right. Um, I was in my 20s when I first started working with um, Condor, and it's been uh, wonderful ever since. Yeah. But uh, I started really designing knives by working with custom makers like Fiddleback and um, Off the Map Custom Knives as well, yeah. and a couple of other makers, and they helped me really see that to fruition. Yeah. So you can get custom versions and Magna Cut from Dogwood Custom Knives and okay. things like that too. But the Pterosaur, yeah. great, um, great design, and just a really ultra light, good bushcraft knife. Yeah, the Condor stuff is really. It's, it's amazing to me how it's progressed over the years. How yeah. It's just gotten better and better. Yeah, and they're they really trying. More and more designs. Yes, we're starting to work with better blade steels now, too. Yeah. Um, you know, get, not, not saying 1095 is bad at all. Heck no. Sure. But 14C, 20, and, yeah. and some more uh, uh, nicer materials yeah. and things like that, too. So, okay, this is an important question. Yeah. Right. Favorite Godzilla movie, go. Oh, favorite Godzilla movie would have to be either Godzilla versus Gigan. Because um, I'm a huge Gigan fan. That's a guy who looks like a, 
a chicken and a chainsaw had a baby together. Um, and then probably for all these Godzilla fans out there, one of the more controversial ones, Godzilla Final Wars. Really? Yeah, because it has so many monsters, mixed martial artists, artists in it, and it doesn't hold back. It's everything sci-fi, the so, whole movie. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to yeah. get my favorite. Yes. Godzilla versus Megalodon. Oh, cool. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, Megalon in there, that has Gigan in that movie, too. Uh, where he has the one with the uh, with the hooks on his hands because oh, they yeah. both fight um, Jet Jaguar and Godzilla together, right. and that's the that is the ominous scene where he's sliding on his on his, his tail, tail all the way through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm multiple Godzilla. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> awesome. That's the Shawa era, I think. Um, Godzilla vs. Megalon came out in the 70s, and that yep. was like a weird time for Japan. So there's a lot of really crazy designs and artwork in that movie. Yeah, yeah, for it's sure. Cool. Well, thanks, man. I'm glad to hear you're a yes, Godzilla fan. That's absolutely. a good, good choice, too. It was nice meeting you, Jeff. Yeah, Thank you, you too. so much for allowing the interview. And, absolutely. And check out the video because we're going to have his full class on this video, and you guys can see what he oh, wow. teaches. Cool. Yeah, cool deal. Yeah. So, yeah. There's going to be a lot of hyper stuff because I didn't know anybody was uh, filming there, but that's cool. <laughs> you guys enjoy the ride. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks again. Have All a good right. one. So you can't go to a knife shop on their 21st birthday on National Knife Day and not buy a knife. Well, I did. So this is the new Essie. It is the Sencillo. Uh, this is the A2 version. Um, it is a very comfortable little knife. I love this thing. Fell in love with it. They had a great deal on it. Then also picked up this very cool multi-sheath that works with multi-tools or pistol mags. Um, very nicely done. Uh, good price. So, you know, I didn't buy terribly too much, um, but that wasn't the point. It was really getting there and meeting a lot of cool people and talking to them and shooting some video for you guys. So, And last but not least, I want to show you guys the very new Prepared Wanderer patch. Uh, just got these in. These are a 3D vinyl Velcro patch. There will be a link in the description down below to my Big Cartel site. So if you Google Prepared Wanderer Big Cartel, this will come up and you can order this patch as well as uh, my original patch, cloth patch, and also Prepared Wanderer stickers. Of course, you know, I appreciate when you guys order this stuff. It, it helps me out. Um, and I love, you know, seeing people wear my stuff. So this is my original design, the new Prepared Wanderer Arrowhead patch, limited edition. There's only like a hundred of these made right now. And when I run out of them, I got to decide if I'm going to make more. So get yours while you can. And as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on the Prepared Wanderer.